Week four of the high school football season in Arkansas, and we finally got what feels like football weather in Mark Trees. We welcome you to the Tube Town Game of the Week. Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Matus alongside Alex Smith, and tonight it's a 2A3 conference matchup between the Mark Tree Indians and the Earl Bulldogs. Alex, the 2A3s had a lot of competition near the top for the last couple of years, and Earl has been right in the thick of it. Mark Tree with an opportunity tonight for an early season upset. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mark Tree, they played good last week. They uh, rushed over 168 yards on Christ County in the first half. Of course, Christ County eventually prevailed, but it is a good chance for Mark Tree to show a pretty upset tonight. Uh, I do believe Earl is still the number one ranked team here in the state. The number five ranked team in the state. And they're coming off a pretty big win themselves uh, with a 58-21 victory over Midland last week. Uh, getting to see sophomore quarterback Gary Bohannon, who missed a little bit of the uh, little bit of the start of the season with a deep thigh bruise, returned to action last week and uh, ha had himself a show last week. 14 for 21 through the air for 320 yards. He also put up four touchdowns, so uh, not a bad return to yet, a return to action for the sophomore quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so he had five balls for the first three weeks of the season, but then he comes out and throws 14 of 21 for 320 yards. Um, now, all of them like to throw it. Uh, of course, those numbers say so. Um, now, the wind could play a little bit of a factor in that. We could have winds between 10 to 15 miles an hour tonight, but We'll see how the fair night goes. That's right. Again, finally, we've got weather that feels like it's supposed to be it football weather tonight. A nice 66 degrees. The temperature is going to continue to drop into the uh, into the mid 50s. I would expect uh, by the time tonight's game is over. And as you mentioned, the wind anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour. Uh, so you're right. It, Earl could be forced to change their game plan up a little bit here tonight, but we'll see what they. We'll see what they do. It'll be exciting to see. I, I'd sure like to see them come out and throw it 30 times. I think that'd, that'd be fun for us and the viewers to see. But uh, we'll just see how it goes, and we're about underway here. I think you're absolutely right. I love to see a, a, uh, a multiple formation offense, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what uh, Coach Albert Coleman and the Bulldogs are going to be running tonight. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, you'll have first-year head coach Cody Willis running a double-wing offense for the Indians, and that's, uh, again, in his first year, going to be a new system that they're still trying to adapt to, uh, but, you know, they've, they've done a decent job on the year so far at 2-2. Two and two. Absolutely. So Mark Tree will begin tonight's game kicking away. Earl has got two men back deep to return. And, again, Mark Tree, 2-2 two and two on the year, 0-1 oh in conference play. They've uh, lost to Piggott already this year as well as cross county there are two losses cross county beat them 37 to 21 played very well against uh the t-birds and we got to see them play a couple weeks back against uh this, the t-birds are a very good team it was west side uh, t-birds had no trouble with west side um they're gonna they're gonna be a tough team to beat in the 2a this year all right and i think we are lined up for the kick jaleel lott set to kick off for the indians and the return men very short for Earl. They were standing at about the 30-yard line, and that ball went out of bounds at about the 48-yard line right at midfield. So a very uh, high, short kick to start off tonight's ball game, and some excellent starting position for the Earl Bulldogs. And it looked like they knew it was going to be short from the beginning, but I don't think anybody thought it was going to be that short. So again, excellent field position for Coach Coleman and the Bulldogs for their first time out on the field. And they get to do it with no time taking off the clock either. Looks like they're going to come out with three wide receivers and two backs in the backfield. And they're still trying to find out the exact spot of the ball. Gary Bohannon. Standing back. And he stands in there at six foot four. And as a sophomore, you got to be excited about that. They'll run it up the gut the first play of the game. So that'll set up a second and seven after that three yard pickup. Nice little start to get you over the 50 yard line. And like you said, they have great field position to start this game. And we'll see if they can't take advantage of it here. Two plays in, you got to love that. Richard Merritt in the backfield alongside Bohannon. 
in a shotgun formation. Four wide receivers set, sends one man in motion. They'll hand it off. Around the edge, that's Cortez Banks. Banks has a seam down the sideline, still on his feet, following his blockers, and he's out of bounds just past the 30-yard line. What a run by Cortez Banks. Wow. Huge pickup on the ground from the senior running back for the Bulldogs, and he takes them down deep inside of Mark Tree territory, and they're only three plays in to their first offensive possession of the game. Less than a minute gone by here in the first quarter. Earl already threatening in Mark Tree territory. Again, Bohannon with Merritt in the backfield, and back there with him is Banks. Handed off to Merritt. Merritt stutter step in the backfield. Nice field, tackle. Could not get by the defender. And that was Blake Daniels coming up with the stop in the backfield. So Blake Daniels with a big stop there. Sets up second and 11. Pretty close to second and 12 for the Bulldogs. One back in the backfield. Actually, Banks and Merritt both back there as Marcus Brown switched to the right side. Earl has twin wide receivers, and I don't mean a formation. I mean they literally <laughs> have twins playing wide receiver tonight in Marcus and Marquise Brown. And they do number 12 and number 13. You'll see a little bit of both of those guys tonight as Earl is going to keep it on the ground, and they'll pick up about two to three yards. It looks like it'll be third and nine. I mean, you know, after two huge chunks, or excuse me, one huge chunk of a play and two successful plays in a row, this is a big third down for Mark Tree on this first drive. They're back in the shotgun formation. It looks like they have four wide receivers. They're going to hand it off around the edge for Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown across the 20, across the 15, still on his feet down to about the 10-yard line. And they will actually spot him at the 9, but more than enough to pick up a first down. And that's the second time we've seen that tonight. The first time they ran it around the other side, but Brown had a good block there by Dontrell Johnson. He was able to get a big gain and a big first down. Again, Marcus and Marquise, the two twins for the Arrow Bulldogs, both uh, excellent athletes. And at first and goal inside the Mark Tree 10 yard line. Bohannon back in the backfield all alone. Five wide receiver set. Takes the snap, he's going to keep it himself. He's across the five, very near the goal line, outstretched his hand. Did he get across? And still no look from the official. Looks like they're going to spot him down right about the one yard line, but a nice pickup on first down well, for the Bulldogs. It, it looked like up. he got across from where we were sitting here, but it did. it did. Does set up second and goal from the one yard line and Earl threatening to score here with nine minutes remaining in the first. And they have not taken any time at all. Granted, they had great field position to start this drive, but see if they can punch it in here. Back in the shotgun formation. Merritt going to take the handoff and Mark Tree snuffed that one out quickly. They got in the backfield in a hurry. They were able to stop Merritt before he was able to do too much damage on the ground. And that was a great tackle by Blake Daniels. He plays quarterback and linebacker for Mark Tree. And uh, he just caught Brown on the play before that, and we saw him make another big tackle there. Right, we'll bring up third down inside the five-yard line of Mark Tree. See what Coach Coleman dials up here. Again, Bohannon in the backfield, in the shotgun all alone. Sends a man in motion. That was Banks, and we'll stop the play before it gets started. It'll be a uh, false start, most likely on Earl, and that'll back him up five yards. They'll have to replay third down, but this time they'll have third and goal from about the seven. Oh, no, It'll it's going to be against Mark Tree. It will be against Mark Tree, and so that will uh, be half the distance to the goal. Set up inside the one-yard line, now third and goal for Earl. And that's a big break for Earl, and I wouldn't be surprised if they handed it to Merritt again here and gave him one more opportunity is in the backfield alongside Bohannon standing just to his right. Earl in their wide away uniforms. Bohannon's going to keep it himself. Runs it up the gut and I don't think he got in. And the ball's out. The ball is out but I think they're going to say he was down but they spot him short of the goal line. That will bring up fourth and goal so we'll see what Earl wants to do here as we are down under eight minutes left to play in the first. And that was a great stop by Mark Tree. That was, I mean, I don't think you're going to stop Gary Bohannon that much whenever he comes up the middle of that hard and they were able to do it two plays this drive. You know, Mark 
Tree very happy about the way their defense has played here on this drive so far. They have allowed them down here into the uh, red zone, but kept them out of the end zone and now forced a fourth down. 7.43 remaining here in the first. And uh, again, just got to be very excited if you're uh, an Indian fan about about that stop there on third. Uh, you sure do. And uh, uh, Earl's moved the ball really good this drive. Uh, we haven't seen any... Uh, penalties on Earl. Um, Gary Bohannon's done a real good job of moving the ball down the field. And as you see here again, that stop. Um, Mark Tree's going to need a lot of that tonight. Uh, Earl's got a lot of firepower. Yeah, the ball did pop out of there at the end of the play. You did see that there, but again, the play was ruled down. So a lot of uh, horses in the stable for Coach Coleman. Absolutely. And the Earl Bulldogs, a lot of uh, options they can go to. They can hand it off to Richard Merritt. They can hand it off to either of the senior twins, Marcus or Marquise. And then you've already seen Cortez Banks on this drive take it for a large gain on the ground as well. So several different options here for Coach Coleman. Not to mention Bjorn Warren. That's exactly right. Yeah, another six foot, 200 pounder as we see here. We'll see what they do on fourth down. The snap goes over the head of Bohannon, and it's picked play. up by Mark Tree. And Mark, Mark Tree, Tree couldn't have asked for anything better to happen right there. Mark Tree at the 15-yard line will now take over on offense, and you're absolutely right, Alex. A huge break there for the Indians, and just a, a bad snap by the Bulldogs. And Bohannon had to be seven feet to catch that one, and it sailed right over his head, and Mark Tree, uh, they'll take it. So again, they'll set up from their own 15-yard line. It looks like they'll actually have them set up from, from their own 13. And they'll come out in that wing T, that double wing. And there's a run right up the middle, still on his feet. Great is cut. Lott, and Lott's down to about the 31-yard line. That was a great cut by Lott. And he was able to take an extra 10 yards after that one step. Jaleel Lott. The senior fullback also saw him uh, kick off, the opening kickoff that went about 15 yards. Made up for it there with a 20-yard with a, uh, a pickup. <laughs> we will take the handoff again. And he isn't able to move the pile very far. It'll be second down. Blake Daniels, the senior quarterback, coming to the sideline here to talk things over with Coach Willis, get a play. Coach... Cody Willis in his first year again with Mark Tree. Coming from Truman, he's an assistant there. He replaces Coach Waylon Dunn. And Coach Dunn had some success here at Mark Tree. He was 25 and 36 in the last six seasons. Uh, but Mark Tree did see the playoffs a few times during his tenure. Trying to make it back again this year for, I believe, the fourth time straight. Back in the double wing. Daniel under center, hands it off to the right side. Following his blockers, now cutting back upfield into about the 45-yard line, taken down by a host of Bulldogs. And I believe that was D'Angelo Griffin. And Griffin, another one of the uh, stars for this Indian team. And that was another great carry by another great running back. And uh, that's two great runs in a row. D'Angelo Griffin had 170 yards against Harrisburg earlier this year. So... Trying to rack up some yardage tonight here against a very good Earl Bulldog team. Earl only gave up 15 points per game last year, uh, so you know that they certainly want to try to try to hold their opponents uh, to as, as few as points of, as possible and try to beat that average this year. This time they're going to stop the play in the backfield. Ford ever got back to the line of scrimmage. That'll set up second and long for Mark Tree. And right now, just some some uh, a transitional phase, I think, right now for Mark Tree. A lot of seniors and juniors on their team. Uh, they are very much going to be in a rebuilding process over the next couple of years once a lot of these guys graduate. And they will, and we've seen that a few times. We've seen that at Westside this year. Uh, we, we've also saw it when we went to Tennessee and we saw Millington play, uh, Collierville, just a lot of teams that uh, have to go through a rebuilding process. And like you said, Mark Tree's one of them, and it's, it's soon to come. We second and 12, and Earl going to bring some pressure here. It looks like from the right side. They'll run it to the right, right in the face of that pressure. They'll pick up maybe three to four yards on the ground. 
And that'll bring up third and about nine for Mark Tree. Mark Tree losing a lot of players last year to graduation. Talk about the number of seniors on their squad this year. They lost a couple of big time players in uh, All State, Gerard Hood, also losing All League Terry Carter and Cameron Mitchell. 439 left to play here in the first quarter at Mark Tree. Faking the handoff, tailing him down, pitching it forward, still in the air, wow. caught here on the near sideline, just across the 50, and pushed out of bounds at the Earl 47 yard line. And that was a helter skelter play if I've ever seen it. And that was an awkward play, and he was about sacked, and at the last minute he was able to pitch it, tip it up, and a, a lot of effort for a five yard gain, Andy. D'Angelo Griffin was the one who picked that up. And that will, as amazing as it was, bring up fourth down. Not enough for the first. We'll and see what they want to do here. This is the first fourth down attempt tonight from in the park tree, and they are going to punt it. Their punt formation is out on the field right now. D'Angelo Griffin back deep to punt, but you never know. We could see a fake here on the first punt of the game. We saw it last week we did. with Truman. And this would be the perfect spot to do it. Two seconds left. Oh, the another ball. high snap. Another high snap on fourth down. And very wisely, Griffin just falls down on top of it there. And we'll have ourselves another turnover here. And both teams trying to get the jitters out here in the first quarter. And it would seem so. And like you see there, another high snap. And he was smart enough to just get on it. And maybe he saved six points there. He could have, and you ask yourself, uh, viewing this, why why wouldn't you just try to run and pick that up, maybe try to do anything other than lose the field position you lost, but in the, you know, grand scheme, scheme yeah. in, in, in the frankness to try to pick up that ball, you could end up losing, like you said, the grand scheme of things could have saved six points. Passing a score along from uh, around the region, Blyville up on Nettleton right now, 14 to nothing in the first is... They're going to step back deep to pass, and the pass is incomplete. Dontrell Johnson in there to play a little bit of quarterback right now. The junior for Earl, he was the one tossing that one out wide, and it was incomplete. That will bring up second and ten for Earl. Earl lost a couple of uh, big-time players from their squad last year, too, losing uh, All-State players Tevin Scott and Marcus Lane. But uh, this Earl team is always loaded. There's Earl is always competitive. Uh, as far back as I can remember, I mean, I went to Salem, and Earl has always had a good team, and they've always competed. Five wide receivers this time for Bohannon. He sends Banks in motion, and I think we're going to have a false start here off the Bulldogs as they had uh, one man in motion and kind of jumped a little bit early. Another score to pass along the region in the first quarter. Batesville and Perigord. Pioneers up on the rims, seven to nothing. Some 5A East scores to pass along. 418 remaining here in the first quarter at Mark Tree, still scoreless between Earl and the Indians. Second and 15 after that false start penalty on Earl, and again, an empty backfield for Gary Bohannon. Five wide receivers set. Bohannon takes the snap. Looking to throw, pump fake, throws it deep downfield. He had a wide open wide receiver, but threw it well over his head. You're absolutely, Dontrell Johnson was wide open, but Bohannon has an arm on him, and maybe that's just some of those first quarter jitters we're talking about, and he had a little bit too much of adrenaline going on that one. That will bring up third and 15, and I, I don't know what kind of route Dontrell Johnson just <laughs> ran, but he was about 10 yards from his nearest <laughs> defender. His, he absolutely juked the shoes out of his defender. Third and 15 for Earl. Again, an empty backfield for Bohannon. They're going to let him air it out again here, it looks like, on third. And almost a messed up snap again. He hauls it in, fires it over the middle, and off the hands of the intended receiver, Cortez Banks. Banks just couldn't haul in that rocket, and Bohannon fired in there. Absolutely. Uh, Bohannon did a great job of handling the fumbled snap there, and he did a great job of falling in the pocket and getting rid of it, but just Banks couldn't hang on to it. And Earl not able to get anything going on this drive. It's fourth and 15. We'll see what they want to do. They are uh, fairly well into Mark Tree territory, so they may not want to punt it away, and it doesn't look like they're going to. 
Drops back in the pocket. Got a man on him. Flips it back to a fellow teammate. And still on his feet is Richard Merritt. Merritt finally brought down at the 45-yard line. The coach Albert Coleman, you're not happy with the play of your sophomore quarterback right there. No, that was we saw that in the NFL this week. Brandon Marshall called it the worst play in the NFL. Uh, that right there. I don't even know what to say about that, Andy. It didn't go very far, but it was worth the effort. And this goes back to what we were looking at earlier when uh, the Mark Tree player fell on the fumbled snap. Uh, that's one of the reasons you fall on the snap and you don't try to pick it up there, and it paid off. I think someone much, must have watched that Jets game over the weekend because <laughs> that was very rem reminiscent of that play. Mark Tree first and 10 from their own 44 and a fumble it looks like Mark Tree was able to still pick it up and get a couple of yards out of it actually no actually it looks like we might have a turnover here everything happened so fast I'm not sure really what to make of it and I believe Mark Tree just coughed up the football and just like that one play after getting the ball back on a Ford on a fourth down turnover, they give it right back to Earl. Well, each team has had two offensive possessions and each team has had two fumbles. As Bohannon's going to run this one himself off the left tackle and get across the 40 yard line. Nice little four yard pickup there for Bohannon. I don't know if I've ever seen four offensive drives with four fumbles this early in a game. Especially here in the 2A. <laughs> Especially in this conference. I mean, this team, or this, excuse me, this conference usually stacked with talent, having a bit of a down year. EPC usually up at the top of the ranks. This year they're one and three so far. Again, Earl always up at the top and in the thick of things. This year not really much different as they're going to hand it off to Richard Merritt and let him do his thing on the left side. They're a little stutter step down the sideline. Oh, wow. Number one defender. And he's knocked out of bounds just past the 20 yard line. Looks like they're marking down very near the 15. They're going to keep marching and yep, right about the 16 yard line. Another impressive run by Merritt. I don't know how he stayed on his feet right there. And watch and then, the end of this play, Andy. Great hit, a great block. Wow. Unbelievable run there from Richard Merritt. Sets up first and 10 for Earl inside the 20 yard line. They're down to about the 14 of Mark Tree. Bohannon takes the snap, hands it off to Merritt. Merritt's tackled in the backfield. Dropped down by Jerome Shackelford. Great tackle by the 5'10", 175-pound senior. That was all him on that stop. So Earl with a little bit of momentum here. And Earl has not really had a whole lot of trouble moving the ball. It's just they've had some turnovers here. They had a little bit of trouble on their second drive, but no trouble here on this one as they're now down near the 20-yard line. Bohannon in the shotgun formation all alone in the backfield. Sends one man in motion. He'll hand it off to Marcus Brown. Brown across the 20. He almost lost it. Did he lose it? He, it bounced on the ground like a basketball and bounced right back in his hands, Andy. You got to wonder if the field might be a little bit wet for, for maybe some dew, but... You see an Indian get his he hand absolutely on it, and lost bounces, it. and he picks it back up. That is five fumbles we've seen so far tonight in the first quarter. This is unbelievable. And Earl's lucky to keep the ball on that one again. And we'll bring up third and ten. And Marcus Brown, want to keep an eye on him as he's actually limping off the far sideline right now. So hopefully it's just a cramp and he'll be okay. The Bulldogs have it third and ten right now from the Mark Tree 17-yard line. Shotgun formation. Bohannon looking to throw. Pressure in his face. Lost the football. And Mark Tree might have fell on top of it, but the referee is signaling that it was an incomplete pass. The white hat is signaling that was an incomplete pass. It looks like he was throwing the ball forward, but Andy, that, that could have gone either way. It just didn't look too good. And you're absolutely right. I don't. It's That's very hard to tell. That does bring up fourth down for Earl. And wow, I think both teams just trying to just still trying to establish any kind of game that they can here. Absolutely. If I could say anything, this has just been a pretty messy start to a football game. Shotgun formation again for the Bulldogs. Two wide receivers and a flag down on the far sideline. See what the referees talk about here. 
And I see Marquise Brown over there pleading a case. I, it looks like he might have jumped a little bit early as the referee signals a false start. You saw number 13 in the background there. He had his arms out wide asking what he was doing. Apparently he, uh, he must have twitched or flinched or just did something that was considered offsides. And we're actually going to have a timeout from the Bulldogs. Coach Albert Coleman, I think, needs to calm his team down just a little bit. We need to take a breath here, too. Two minutes, seven seconds remaining in the first quarter. Still scoreless between Mark Tree and Earl here on our Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. We are more than daily transactions. We are more than checks and debit cards. We are more than farmland. For the people of Poinsett County, we are more than just a bank. At First Delta Bank, we see the world through the eyes of our customers because we know that our customers are our most valuable investment. We are proud of who we are and want to earn your banking business. We are First Delta Bank, equal housing lender, gotcha. member FDIC. Gotcha. Andy Manis and Alex Smith back here at Mark Tree. Two minutes, seven seconds remaining. And we have a fourth down play coming up for the Earl Bulldogs. And like we were talking about earlier, Andy, this has just been a pretty messy game. We've seen five to six fumbles just here in the first quarter. And I mean, Earl's had great field position this whole time, um, but they haven't been able to get anything in the end zone and we're down to two minutes left to go here in the first. They've got a long fourth down coming up here on this play. And again, they look like they're gonna go for it here. Bohannon back in the backfield, the sophomore quarterback for the Bulldogs. And he was able to draw Mark Tree off sides, I believe. They might've just got that five yard penalty back. We'll see what the referees say here as they convene. Yeah, it looked like Blake Daniels, uh, the, the senior quarterback linebacker jumped across the line there for Mark Tree, but I believe it's up to the discretion of the refs at this moment. Again, some more scores to pass along for you uh, from around the area. Blyville up on Nettleton in the first quarter, 20 to nothing. Uh, Batesville up on Paragould, 10 to nothing in the first quarter. And Jonesboro leading Little Rock Central, 14 to six. And the call out on the field is gonna be offsides against Mark Tree. So Earl will get that five yard penalty back. And they'll set up to play fourth down Again, this time fourth and 10 from the 17 yard line of Mark Tree. More of a manageable fourth down here for her. Much more so than fourth and 15 would be. Shotgun formation again for Earl. Bohannon back in the pocket to throw. Taking his time, throws it over the middle. Caught at the goal line and a touchdown for the Earl Bulldogs. Dontrell Johnson, the junior wideout. He's able to haul that one in for the touchdown. And you can't say enough about Gary Bohannon. They're standing in the pocket he has all day. And he sits back and finds the only place he could throw it for a touchdown. Great pass, great catch for six. We'll see if they're going to kick an extra point or go for two. And Alex, it looks like they're going to be setting up for a two-point conversion here. Bohannon. Shotgun formation, four wide receiver set, rolling out to his right, looking to throw to the corner, and Johnson incomplete. Great defense by Paul Coleman there. He's only a sophomore, but he was able to get in there at the last minute, excuse me, last second, and knock that ball away and stop the Bulldogs from getting two. And we do have a penalty marker out on the field, so don't go anywhere just yet. Still six to nothing. And I believe that will be declined. I think you are right. It will be declined. So we will head to break with 159 left to play in the first. Again, six to nothing. Earl now on top of Mark Tree for your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. Kaiser LP Gas Company is a family-owned propane company serving residential, commercial, and agricultural customers in Craighead, Crittenden, Poinsett, and Mississippi counties in Northeast Arkansas. Located on Highway 181 South in Kaiser, Arkansas, Kaiser LP Gas can fill all of your propane needs, whether it's for farm equipment, your home, or business. Kaiser LP Gas has you covered. Call today at 870-526-2198. Andy Manis and Alex Smith back here with you in Mark Tree where the Indians now trail the Earl Bulldogs six to nothing. A nice touchdown 
catch from Dontrell Johnson from Gary Bohannon, and now the Bulldogs up by six. Absolutely. Fourth and ten, Gary Bohannon steps back in the pocket, waits for a good three to four seconds, and finds Dontrell Johnson in the middle of the field for the six. And Earl setting up to kick off here. It looks like this could be an onside kick attempt here. Cortez Banks lined up to kick, and he's angled very shallow, and it will be quite a deep kick off oh. the hands of one of the uh, return men for Mark Tree. It looks like Ricky Harmon got his hands on that. It went over his head and out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. So if he doesn't touch that, that goes out of bounds, and Mark Tree's got a lot better field position. You have a lot better field position. You'll have it near midfield, actually, and that's just one of those where you say oops after you did it and you know what you did at right away. 157 remaining here in the first quarter. Mark Tree trailing by just a touchdown. And Earl so far only been into the end zone once, but both teams really, as we've mentioned throughout the course of this uh, first quarter, both teams having a hard time holding on to the football. Absolutely. I believe there's been five fumbles. Not all of them have been lost now, but it's it's been really sloppy play, and uh, Earl's really lucky to have that six on the board. Pitch out to the right, D'Angelo Griffin. Past the line of scrimmage, but not much further than that. Out to about the 20-yard line, it'll be a pickup of four. And that will bring up second and six after that run by the senior tailback. Mark Tree had an opportunity on their last offensive drive to capitalize on an Earl turnover, and then the very first snap of that drive, they fumbled it and gave it right back to the Bulldogs. So hoping to avoid anything like that on this timeout. Second and six now, and they come back out in the double wing. Again, Blake Daniels under center, and Earl looks like they're going to bring pressure from that far side. There's the snap, a run up the middle, and trying to push that pile forward. I'm not even sure who got the handoff there. And it's hard to tell from that double wing formation. Uh, yeah, but we're going to see that all night, though. Mark Tree loves to run that formation. And that's going to be Jaleel Lott. I've seen him carry it a couple times up the gut for the Indians. I only see him do it a lot more tonight. Under a minute left to play here in the first. And it's third and two for Mark Tree. Again, they have not had a particularly hard time moving the ball against Earl. They just uh, haven't been able to hold on to the football. There's the snap, handoff again up the middle, and this time uh, they're going to move the pile a good five to six yards. Nice pick up on the ground, they're able to move the chains for the Indians. Another chunk of three yards, classic Mark Tree. And I think that was Jaleel Lott again on the carry, big 219-pound senior for Mark Tree, kind of re reminiscent of the uh, running back we saw a week ago from Pocahontas, Eric Wolf. Absolutely. Very short, stocky, and will run you over. Yes, very low center of gravity, uh, and they will run you over. Under 15 seconds left. We'll see if Mark Tree can get a playoff. They have to. There's six seconds left on the play clock. Daniel steps up to the line, takes the snap, pitches it out to Griffin. Griffin, stutter step in the backfield, but he got knocked down before getting back to the line, and that is how we will end the first quarter of play here in Mark Tree. The Indians trailing the Earl Bulldogs six to nothing as we head to the second quarter here on your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. Farmers Bank and Trust offers instant image debit cards. Showcase your school spirit, your grandkids, your pet, or your favorite sport. Walk in, open an account, and walk out of the bank with an instant image uh -oh. debit card. Why is everybody having a hard time? Finally, a debit card as unique as you. From What'd you say that score was again? Six to nothing on the bridge of the first Farmers Bank and Trust, with locations in Blyville, Gosnell, and Manila. Member FDIC. Andy Menace and Alex Smith back here with you in Mark Tree. The Indians trailing the Earl Bulldogs six to nothing as we get set to start the second quarter of action in a very even game so far. Alex, just a, a little, uh, a little messy so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, the score is only six to nothing. Uh, Earl could have had a couple more touchdowns, honestly, there in that first quarter um, due to a couple turnovers though from them. Uh, Mark Tree is able to keep it low here, and it's really been an even game so far. Well, I honestly wonder if, if Coach Coleman is uh, is upset with his team because this is a this is a powerhouse football team that can put mm -hmm. up a lot of points. And, uh, so far this year, Earl has outscored their opponents 158 to 76. They're averaging 40 points per game, 
Uh, and again, they averaged, I think, 55 last year. So uh, six points at this point in the ballgame, very low number for them. First, excuse me, second and 12 for Ooh. Mark Tree in an absolute big time hit at the line of scrimmage by Earl. And that was a good play by Mark Tree. Double reverse, uh, packed in tight there, but big number 58 was not fooled. Selvi, wow. Jaquavius Selvi, the sophomore for Earl. Saw his team still congratulating him for that big boy hit. Going to get a couple stickers on his helmet next week for that hit. That brings up third and long for Mark Tree, third and 12 to be exact, as Daniels back up under center. Earl shifting the line, handoff goes to the left for Jerome Shackelford. Shackelford across the 30-yard line, but not much further, down to about the 31 of Mark Tree, and that will bring up fourth and 10. I think they got back to the original line of scrimmage here. And they will probably have to punt this one away. The last time we saw them try to punt it away in the first quarter they had a snap go over the head of D'Angelo Griffin who was back to punt they had to fall on it and gave Earl some very great field position mm -hmm. see if they could do it here five seconds left on the play clock there's the snap it's a good snap and a good kick away it'll take a bounce and picked up at about the 28 cross to about the 40 the 50 to the other 40, the 35, the 30, still on his feet. Down to the 25, down the sideline. Wow. A touchdown, oh, oh baby. What a run from Marcus Brown. And the Earl Bulldogs now up 12 to nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a great return by Marcus Brown. He catches it on the hop. There is a flag oh, out on the field, though. You hate to see that after such a great return. Block in the back, so all of that for nothing. And, you know, I tell you, they're, they're, they might be a little lucky there because thinking about the end of that play, it kind of looked like Marcus was showboating there a little <laughs> at the end. Yeah, he was holding the ball out in front. I don't know if they would call him on that after such a great return. But, you know what, Mark Tree is excited, and uh, I don't blame him. Let's watch the return anyway. There you see, he gets to about there, and I, you know, I don't know if they would flag him for that or not. He wasn't necessarily taunting anyone. Yeah. So, I say, I say, let him, let him go, let him go for it. But that, that big take back by Marcus Brown will uh, now put Earl all the way back at the 35-yard line of Mark Tree. And, oh man, you hate to see that happen. That was you a really do. that was a 70. That was about a 70-yard punt return for touchdown by Marcus Brown. Now they'll have to start from the Indian 30-yard line. Shotgun formation for Bohannon. And he's going to look to throw. And he's going to throw it deep down the far sideline. Marquise Brown at the 30-yard line, taken down at about the 26. And, and he says, don't worry, brother, I'll take care of it. He gets it the very next play on a great shot from Bo Hannon. Great stop, great catch. He gets three or four feet down even. Great play by Brown. He was able to just turn around. A great job of coming back to the ball, slightly underthrown. But Marquise Brown doing a great job of tracking it and able to jump up and make the catch. Great throw by Bohannon to have faith in his receiver. And whenever it's a route like that and it's just a fly route run straight, sometimes you just got to throw it up and have faith in your receiver, and he did. Bohannon now with first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Two backs in the backfield, Banks and Merritt. They'll bring it off to Merritt. Merritt running straight up the gut, bounced off one defender, still on his feet, trying to. Bowl his way through a couple of other ones, and he's down to about the 26-yard line, and he picks up uh, about nine yards on the carry. And it looks like it'll be one yard shy of a first down, and it looks like Earl's starting to gain momentum here, Andy. Well, and it could be, again, the roster size of Mark Tree. Their defense has been out there a little bit longer than Earl's has, and... Uh, when your defense has to play that many minutes consecutively and you don't have a whole lot of guys on your roster to, to keep them fresh, that, that can certainly happen. Second and one for the Bulldogs. There's a snap for Bohannon. Hands it off to Merritt. Merritt, stutter step up the middle. And I believe he got more than enough for the first down. 
close to the 10 yard line. And I think they'll actually spot him at the 11. So Earl will have it first and 10 with a chance to uh, get four plays without having a score. Mm -hmm. Five yard gain on the ground there for Merritt. Brings up first and 10 again from the 11 yard line now. Two backs in the backfield, Banks and Merritt. Two wide receiver set. Merritt again gets the handoff. He's going to go out to his left. Trying to fight off two Mark Tree Indians, and he's taken down. He'll stop his forward progress at about the 11-yard line, even though he's getting up now from about the 15. But they'll say, again, his forward progress was stopped uh, about the 11. So no gain on that carry. It'll bring up second and 10. Nice stop there by Mark Tree. Yeah, it was a really good stop by Caden Williams and D'Angelo Griffin. Uh, uh, he tried to get outside, and they just wouldn't let him, and it was a great stop. Richard Merritt, an all-state rusher a year ago for Earl, rushed for over 1,800 yards. He rushed for 518 yards through three three playoff games last year. So wow. What a workhorse. Handoff goes to Cortez Banks. Banks follows one defender, spins back upfield, and he's across the 10-yard line, uh, maybe down to about the 9, and it'll bring up third and about – eight to go for Earl. And another good stop by Mark Tree. They're trying to get out. Earl is trying to get outside. And uh, Mark Tree's ends are doing a great job as we see a player here. That's going to be Nick Andrews, the junior lineman for Mark Tree. And he's just a little slow getting back to the line. And he's, he's still out there on out. the field. One back in the backfield. Banks goes in motion for Bohannon. Bohannon's going to keep it and run to the left. Follows his blocker. Stiff Good arm. Ball. He's across the 10. Tries to bowl over one defender, taken out of bounds at about the six yard line. That will bring up fourth down for Earl. And again, they do not have to score to reset the down markers. They and just have to get to about the two. Yep. The two yard line. And that, I believe, in uh, no time was meant to be an option. He was keeping the ball the whole way there. Gonna bring up fourth and four for Earl with under eight minutes left, or with under eight minutes left to play here in the first half. And Gary Bohannon's back in the backfield with one back and four wide receivers set to throw to. Cortez Banks in the slot here. Bohannon looking to throw. Throws in the right corner. Great. And a great throw and catch. Marcus Brown with a touchdown. And Marcus Brown gets his touchdown eventually. Uh, great pass by Bohannon again. He's having a great game. How about the touch from Bohannon here on this play? He knew right where he needed to go, and he threw it right where only his man could get it. Brown was the only man on the field who could even touch that ball, and good for him coming down with it for six. Absolute perfect placement. Pitch and catch for a touchdown. They're going to go for two again here. Trying to make it 20 to nothing. Merritt bouncing off one defender and off of another, and he'll cross the goal line, and it should be 20 to nothing now. Mark Tree leads. Excuse me, Earl leads Mark Tree. 7.46 remaining here in the first half. We'll take a quick break. Don't touch that dial. We're back, We're back with more of your Two Town Sports Game of the Week. Action Medical Supply in Truman is a family-owned local business dedicated to providing the best medical supplies and service. Let us show you how much a back brace can enhance your life and relieve your pain. Medicaid, Medicare, and most insurance is accepted and Action Medical will even deliver to your door. Stop by or call Action Medical Supply today at 870-483-6959. Uh, I said a moment ago it was 20 to nothing. It's actually 14 to nothing. I forgot that uh, big punt return for a touchdown was mm -hmm. taken off a moment ago. But how about the twins on that last drive for the Earl Bulldogs? Marcus and Marquise Brown coming up with a whole bunch of yards. And Marcus Brown uh, able to haul in a touchdown pass from Gary Bohannon. And that makes it 14 to nothing. Kickoff will go out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. At that time, nobody from Mark Tree was going to touch that one, so they'll set up shop with pretty good field position around midfield. So 
again, Earl scoring on a 65-yard drive there, and the two brothers putting up a ton of yards on that drive, Marcus and Marquise. Now Mark Tree's going to try to come out here on offense and uh, get something happening here in the second quarter. And they really need to, Andy, and this is the time uh, we've mentioned Earl has some really big momentum going right now, and if Mark Tree doesn't score here, they're going to have a really tough time trying to come back later tonight. Daniels under center. He's going to pitch it to Griffin. Griffin stutter step, trying to find a corner to get through the line of scrimmage, and he runs into a wall of white and maroon. That was a great team tackling there by Earl, as Griffin had nowhere to go. There you saw he finally just stopped and tried to cut back upfield to try to get any yards he could. And that's six Earl tacklers in one spot. The flag is down on the field, and it looks like it's going to be against Mark Tree. I'm not sure if it's a holding penalty or... It will be against Mark Tree. You're marking it off like it's a holding penalty, Alex. And I believe, I believe it will be 10 yards holding. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And that's what we talked about Mark Tree not needing to do right now. They really need to put a good drive together. Again, a lot of, uh, a lot of younger guys tonight. Four penalties for 30 yards so far tonight for Mark Tree. Ball is run up the middle. Good for a gain of maybe two to three yards. And that's big number 22, Jaleel Lott. Jaleel Lott, seen him carried a few times tonight. Again, 220 pound fullback for Mark Tree. And he can really pound it up the middle. First, excuse me, second and 20 after that one yard gain. Mark Tree just might need to think about opening up the playbook here. It's hard to do that when you run a double wing offense. Though. It really is. It does limit you. And we've seen that a lot this year with a lot of these teams that run this double wing. And There's a double reverse there on that play. Uh, big gain, and that's, that's exactly what they need right there. But like we were saying, we, we see teams who stick to this double wing formation. They seem to get stuck in it at times. Uh, but if you can break out big runs like that, then there's no worries. Faking the run off to the right side, and they ran it off to the left with Paul Coleman, the sophomore tailback for the Indians, and he's able to make it a third and manageable for the Indians. As you said, a nice pickup on the ground there. Third and nine for Mark Tree. Two wide receivers for the Indians. And they might do something a little bit different here on this drive. We'll see. Hand it off, and they're going to go nowhere with that play, and that will bring up another fourth down for Mark Tree. D'Angelo Griffin on the carry there, not able to pick up more than a yard. And Actually, probably one those, lost one. That was another one of those quick double handoffs that we saw Selby absolutely eat up earlier. And uh, I think Earl's been watching some game film because they're onto that. And, uh, just another good play by their defense and another – Big fourth down. Under just at six minutes actually left to play here in the second quarter. Mark Tree trailing 14 to nothing. About to have to punt this one away. And I think Coach Cody Willis wants a timeout. And we will give him a timeout. Again, 6-0-3 remaining to play in the first half. 14 to nothing is your score. Score the Earl Bulldogs up on the Mark Tree Indians for your Tube Town Sports game of the week. Say it loud, say it proud. Show your true colors with the new School Spirit debit cards and checks now available at First Delta Bank. Express yourself. Let your debit card or check show your never-ending school spirit with every purchase you make. Available in these great designs. You can take a piece of your school spirit with you everywhere you go. Stop by First Delta Bank or log on to our website to find out more about the School Spirit cards and checks. Now available at First Delta Bank. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Get ready for M Andy Manis and Alex Smith back here with you for your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. In Mark Tree tonight, the Indians trailing Earl 14 to nothing, 6.03 remaining here in the second quarter. Fourth down for the Indians. They're set to punt this one away. One man back. 
back deep to return for Earl. And some scores from around the area. Nettleton kind of catching up on Blybo now, 20 to 14 in the second quarter. That punt is going to be down at about the 41 yard line of the Bulldogs. And Earl will come back out here on offense. Some other scores from around the area. Pocahontas up on Harrisburg, 28 to nothing. Truman up on West Side, 24 to six. Last time we checked in with Jonesboro, they were still leading Little Rock Central as well, 14 to six. So far tonight for Gary Bohannon and the Earl Bulldogs there, three for seven through the air for 64 yards and two touchdowns. And they're gonna try to improve upon that this time out. And the two way, uh here in the Northeast, that's that's great numbers from a quarterback. You can't ask for any better numbers. Uh, we haven't seen it yet this year, and this is some of the best quarterback play we've seen. If you're in the 2A3 and you've got a six foot four quarterback, my money's probably going to be on you to win the division. <laughs> he's just a sophomore. I'm talking about. And that's Gary incredible Bohannon. that he's just a sophomore. That really is. He's got a really good arm on him, and I mean Earl with all the athletes they get over the years. I mean. This conference is going to have to see Bohannon for two more years. That's scary. It's very scary it's very to think scary. about. If you're uh, playing on any team other than the Earl Bulldogs, they now have it second and five. Bohannon, again, in the shotgun formation. He's got four wide receivers set to throw to, and that's what he's going to do, looking to throw. He steps up in the pocket, throws deep down the field. Got one man. It's one of the twins just over the head of Marcus Brown, and a flag is down on the field near the line of scrimmage, most likely going to be holding. And that's going to be a big 10-yard penalty, and it is. That'll be now second and 15 if that's from the spot of the foul, and it looks like the spot of the foul is right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it does look like it will be second and 15, and another costly penalty. Uh, it was a great throw and a great effort by Brown again, but all for naught as there was a flag on the play. 5.09 remaining here in the second quarter. Again, that play is going to back up Earl quite a bit. And Earl already breaking their huddle. They're ready to head to the line. They haven't even marked off the play yet. So Earl, I imagine, will be headed to the line pretty quickly here. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Four wide receiver set again for Bohannon. Excuse me, three wide receiver set. Two out wide, one in the slot, two backs in the backfield. And Mark Tree looks like they're going to bring pressure. It's going to be a pitch out to Merritt. Merritt stutter step in the backfield off of one man. He's around the corner, jukes back to the middle of the field. Still on his feet, he's across the 40. Down to about the 32-yard line of Mark Tree and a huge game on the ground from Richard Merritt, the senior tailback from Earl. Watch this outside linebacker bring the blitz, Andy. He saw it, he knows it, and he misses it. And that one missed tackle there by Shackelford cost him about 40 yards. Mark Tree knew it was coming, and you see him audible there at the end. But you, that's what happens when you don't rack up, wrap up and make the tackle. Richard Merritt juke two players before finally dragging another two down to the 34-yard line, which is where they are now. And I'm fairly certain he it looked like he... I just got a really quick stiff arm in there at the beginning of that play to that initial defender in the mm -hmm. backfield. Bohannon looking to throw, facing pressure, steps up, avoids one defender, throws it down the near sideline and almost picked off by one of the Indian defensive backs. A great look at it, but Paul Coleman just couldn't quite get there in time. Absolutely. Boy, Earl has got a definite bright spot in, in Gary Bohannon, and we keep talking about what an advantage is to have a quarterback like that, but you really just don't understand unless you know the game of football, what a six foot five quarterback can do for you. Absolutely, and we've seen it here tonight with his arm, and I think we're gonna see it again here, and possibly here on this play. Second Ezra looks to air it out. Second and 10 and an empty set for him, and that's exactly what they do. But over the head, it looks like everybody was running a curl route there. Everybody <laughs> ran about 10 yards and turned around and sat down on it. And that was that arm we were talking about, just too much arm there. Four twenty-five in the second quarter here in Mark Tree. Getting some news uh, out of the second quarter between Rivercrest and Piggott. Colts up on Piggott twenty-one to seven. And Piggott having themselves a pretty good year. I don't think they've really are. lost a game yet. Third and ten here for the Bulldogs. Another shotgun formation here. 
for Bohannon. He sends Banks in motion to the right. The snap is over his head, and he does just fall down on top of it that time. And that's, a, that's an unnecessary hit because in high school football, you don't have to touch the uh, the defender to to make him down. So they'll call that uh, unnecessary roughness. And Earl's going to get a first down out of this because that's a personal foul. It is a personal foul there. And that's just something Nick Andrews probably didn't think about until right after he did. He is probably just hustling until the end of the play. And he is getting lit up over here by one of the coaches on the sideline. They are in his ear hole, and he knows that he, uh, he, knows that he made a mistake. So Nick Andrews, just the junior for Mark Tree. A definite asset there for a definite asset for them as he stands in at six foot four, two seven. Wow. He'll come off the field and somebody will spell him. Four minutes, five seconds remaining. Third and seven now instead of fourth down for Earl. And Bohannon's gonna throw it deep again. Nice at throw. the 30 yard line. A little curl route, curl route caught and taken down to about the 15-yard line, and they will move the sticks into the red zone of Mark Tree. That sure didn't look like a sophomore throwing that ball, Andy. That was a great hitch route by Brown, and it hit him right in between the numbers. Under four minutes left to play. The clock will stop. stop. They'll keep it moving now as they have reset the chains. And quickly, Earl is already to the line. Merritt in the backfield alongside Bohannon. Banks in the slot. Another slot receiver and faking the handoff. They look like they're going to throw. No, they didn't fake they the will. handoff. They will go to Merritt. That was a good sell there from Bohannon. It looked like he faked the handoff and was getting ready to toss it. Definitely fooled me. That brings up second down and about seven. And we'll say second and six as he picks up four on the play. Again, shotgun formation for Earl threatening to score in Indian Territory once again. They hand it off to Merritt. Merritt running to his right. And he is easily into the end zone for six. Richard Merritt increases the Earl lead. It is now 20 to nothing with 3.08 remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, and there you watch him just stroll in. And that was the first running score of the game tonight uh, for either team, obviously. And uh, he really did. He just strolled on in there at the end. Again, 20 to nothing is your score. Earl's going to come out and go for two here to try to make it 22 to nothing. Bohannon takes the snap. He'll run it himself. Cuts back up the middle. Trying to fight for extra yardage. They push the pile. Second and effort. Second effort gets it. They'll say he got in. Wow. 22 to nothing is your score now after... A little extra leg churning here, and it pays off. And the Bulldogs have increased their lead. 22 to nothing with 3.08 remaining in the first half. We'll step aside for a quick word from our sponsors. Back with more of your Two Town Sports Game of the Week. Whether it's a night out on the town or a special occasion, visit Bistro 1121 in Blyville. Live music on Tuesday. Prime Rib Special on Friday, Bistro 1121 on East Main in Blyville. Perkins Restaurant and Family Bakery in Blyville, newly renovated and open 5.30 a.m. until 11 p.m. daily. Stop by for any meal, anytime, or take home delicious sweets from our bakery. Perkins Restaurant and Family Bakery in Blyville. Back here with you in Mark Tree, Andy Manus and Alex Smith, 308 remaining. In the first half, 22 to nothing is your score. Earl getting ready to kick off after that Richard Merritt touchdown run for about nine yards. And again, they lead 22 to nothing. Mark Tree's going to have to make something happen here on this drive. And they absolutely are. We talked about it before that last drive that Earl had quite a bit of momentum going into their last few possessions, and they were able to capitalize. The score now being 22 to nothing. Mark Tree really has to get something going. They'll take the kickoff at about the 25-yard line, running here to the near side of the field, following his blocker across the 40. Oh, and he'll lean forward to about the 43-yard line, but a, a pretty nice return there on the ground by Jalen Gunn. Jalen Gunn, a senior fullback for Mark Tree, sets up the Indians at their own 33-yard line. Excuse me, their own 43-yard line. 
from Cortez Banks, the kicker, also making the tackle on that play. We've seen him run the ball in that, uh, in that spread offense tonight. Uh, he does it all. Out there playing defensive back right now as the Bulldogs set up on defense. The Indians set up on offense. Daniels under center, and he's going to pitch it to Griffin. Griffin finding a hole. He's across the 45, the 50, and drug down by two Bulldogs out of bounds at the 47-yard line of Earl. Nice gain on the ground there from D'Angelo Griffin following his blockers and finding the gap. And that's the best you can hope for for Mark Tree right now. Uh, they need to just string two or three more of those together. At 2.50 here left to go in the first half. The time's ticking away. Mark Tree is going to get the ball first after the halftime break. But they would definitely like to put some points up on the board. They don't want to go into the locker room with a goose egg up on the scoreboard. First and 10, and we're going to have a timeout here from Coach Cody Willis. And that is their second Charge timeout of the first half. We'll take one with them. They have one remaining, 234 remaining in the first half, 22 to nothing. Earl leading Mark Tree on your Tube Town Sports game of the week. and Alex Smith back here with you in Mark Tree. The Indians trailing the Earl Bulldogs in this 2A3 conference matchup, 22 to nothing, 234 remaining in the first half. And Earl is kind of starting to pull away with, with this one. Uh, Mark Tree needs to make something happen on this offensive drive. You're absolutely right. And they have two minutes, 30 seconds, and about 44 yards to do so. And Earl stacking the box here on this run. D'Angelo Griffin not able to get anything and actually check that. I believe that was Paul Coleman on the run. You're absolutely right. They stacked the box. They knew it was coming. Uh, I don't know if they've thrown a pass tonight, Andy. Earl knows what's coming right now. There was 11 players <laughs> standing between the hash marks on that play. Absolutely. Earl knew it was coming. On their own, 48. So a loss on the ground there. They're spotted at the 49-yard line, their own 49-yard line after that loss. And nearing the two-minute mark of the first half. Play clock just now starting down to about 18 seconds. I think, it's, I think it got running a little bit late. But Mark Tree still has plenty of time, 10 seconds now. They'll take the snap, hand it off up the middle. And nice churning of the legs there forward for about seven yards and i believe that was jalen gunn on the carry that was that was fullback jalen gunn again uh, taking it right up the middle and he fought real hard there for a nice three or four yards he's able to bring it down to about the 44 yard line of earl and that should bring up third and seven for the Indians with a buck 15 remaining in the first half. 10 seconds left on the play clock for Mark Tree. They take the snap, hand it off to the left. Jerome Shackelford able to get past one man in the backfield, but he runs into a whole wall of white and maroon. And that'll bring up fourth down for Mark Tree. And again, Mark Tree just, uh, they're really sticking to their guns here with this double wing offense and not opening up a whole lot uh, against Earl here tonight. Uh, they really have and you know it's kind of hard to do whenever that's when you run the double wing like we said I mean there's not much you can really do out of it. Uh, you can pass the ball but uh, this is a running team and that's what they do. I have a senior quarterback in Blake Daniels and uh, quite a few seniors on their team quite a few seniors and juniors you will uh, see a lot of new faces next year if you're a Mark Tree Indian fan. A lot of guys graduated. Earl calling their final timeout here in the first half. 56 seconds remaining in the first half, and it's fourth down. Mark Tree trying to decide if they're going to punt it or keep it and try to make something happen on fourth down. Yeah, with 56 seconds left here, if uh, if you don't get this 
first down, then that still gives her a little bit of time. And the way they throw the ball, they can score. And I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Martin Tree try to punt it back in there and bury Earl deep to finish this first half. On the flip side of that, and that's actually looks like what they're going to do. On the flip side, and again, Martin Tree does get the ball first at the halftime break. So they are, it does appear that they are going to try to punt it and pin Earl deep, back deep again to return. This one looks like Marcus Brown. And again, he was able to take one back a minute ago that was called back because of a flag. And speaking of flags. <laughs> speaking of flags, again. False start on Mark Tree, so that'll back him up five more yards and uh, give D'Angelo Griffin a little bit more room to punt. That's just going to give Earl a little more help, and they really don't need any help right now. Gives Mark Tree a little bit more room to punt, and Marcus Brown a little more room to run if he's able to get his hands on this return. And if he can get his hands on the return, believe me, he will. Well, between him and his brother, they <laughs> were able to put up quite a few yards uh, earlier this year against Hazen. And again, we have another, another whistle. False start once again. So we'll back them up even further. And I think Marcus Brown is back. Marcus Brown is losing losing his patience back here at the 25 yard line. He's getting ready to return this return this kick. He's getting a little antsy back here. Well, with every five yards back, it gives him a little better shot at returning one here. So, so maybe he'll get his wish here on this one in our third and final try, and we'll see him get this punt off. I mean, now may be a good time to fake, though. <laughs> could be. Could be. Martree to the line. Angelo Griffin back deep to punt. Snap is good. Griffin gets the punt off, and it's over the head of Brown. It'll bounce at about the 10. Down to about the wow. one yard line. How about that punt from D'Angelo Griffin? Uh, you couldn't ask for a better punt, and that is that is on the inch yard line, it looks like. Excuse me, that's on the five yard line. Oh, yeah, it is. A little bit hard to see down that far from, is, but that was a great punt. from our position, but it was a great punt, able to get them down to about the five yard line. So, very nice job there by D'Angelo Griffin. So, exactly what they wanted to do, they pinned the Bulldogs deep in their own territory. They'll start from their own five yard line. This is the worst starting position of the night for the Bulldogs. And it's going to be interesting to see if Earl comes out and tries to pick up some big yardage here on their first play or two and see if they decide to just run it and get out of this half with the lead 22 to nothing. Back in the shotgun formation, though, Bohannon's going to throw it. Fires it down to the far sideline. Receiver still on his feet across the 20. And a good pickup there by Marquise Brown. And that's a great play getting out of bounds, too. Just, excuse me, he didn't. It looked like the referee blew his hands over, but he did not get out of bounds. It really would have helped. Well, right there, you saw him cut back towards the field instead of cutting towards the sideline, and you're absolutely right. Out. He should have gone out because Earl is out of timeouts. 23 seconds left. Bohannon looking to throw again. Throws again. He's got Marcus Brown this time. Brown this time is pushed out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. And they will stop the clock. No, they won't, though. Well, the Not clock sure should. going to do here. Clock should have stopped, and they'll actually say. He's the, the referees are telling the uh, clock operator right now stop the clock. And the clock should actually be at 13 seconds. I think is what they they could be discussing right now. I believe that's what it is, Andy. I wasn't for sure if the clock was coming down a second every couple of seconds. I wasn't for sure if the clock operator was quite sure. And I think that is what they are telling them right now. And I think they're actually saying it should be 15 seconds. I'm trying to see what they're going to say here. They're resetting the clock. No, I think they're saying 16 seconds. 16 seconds. So 16 seconds for the Bulldogs and a first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Two consecutive plays to the Twins, Marcus and Marquise Brown. And... With 16 seconds left, we'll see what Coach Coleman can do here. Two receivers on either side for Bohannon. He's looking to throw here to the near side. He's got to step up in the pocket. He's flushed out. He's got a man at midfield. Oh, and he slipped up at about the 46-yard line. Eight seconds left. And he is actually – oh, we hope he's okay. 
It's Marcus Brown, and they actually look like they're trying to pull a cramp out of his leg right now. Hopefully it's not an ACL. And if we look on the other side of the ball over there, we see Gary Bohan, and he's also limping off the field. A uh, couple players from Earl. I'm not sure what kind of problems they're having. Well, Marcus Brown, who you're seeing right now on his back, I believe is just getting a cramp looked at. And we hope that's all that is. You did see him slip there. Sometimes when you see a fall like that, it could be something serious like an ACL, but that's not how he's acting right now. Yeah. So he's acting like he just kind of got cramped up a little bit. But on the other hand, as you mentioned, Bohannon down here, he's on the sideline sitting on his rear and is being looked at by a few trainers down here at one of the far light posts at about the 35-yard line. He's... He has uh, got about three or four staff members around him right now. I mean, Donchell Johnson will come in at quarterback, and we'll see if they're going to let him throw the ball. And the buzzer for the end of the second quarter just ran. We have a flag out on the field. I don't think anybody really knows what's happening right now, Alex. Uh, I, I don't think they do. The, uh, the, the clock came all the way off. Um, it should have been stopped. Now there's zero on the clock. And now they put 20 seconds back on the clock. I don't think anybody knows how much time is left on the clock, but Dontrell Johnson and takes the snap. Fumble with 20 seconds. Fumbles it. He's going to run, fire it, and I'm not even sure where that was intended. Andy, this play started with less than 10 seconds, I believe, on it. Now we're back up to 20. And now the buzzer just sounded, and the teams are heading for the locker room. So, all right, it looks like we have figured out what's going on here in Mark Tree. It's halftime, according to uh, the two teams heading to the locker rooms right now. 22 to nothing is the score. Okay. I say the two teams headed to the locker room. Mark Tree's already off the field. Earl still on the sidelines. And if I was Earl, I would be too. Uh, that was bad clock mismanagement here uh, by Mark Tree. And, you know, they are having some words on the field, but... That, that is going to be it for the first half. I don't know what that was, Andy. I've never seen anything like it. We'll have to talk about it during our halftime break coming up after this. Again, your score at halftime, 22 to nothing. Earl leading Mark Tree on your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. Rivercrest. That's right. <laughs> to see the Colts take on the Mustangs. Uh, that will be a very interesting matchup it between will. Rivercrest and Hoxie. All the way down in Wilson. All the way down there in Wilson. It's been a weird night for kickoffs too, Andy. I, I haven't seen a, a, a normal kickoff all night, and we'll see if we can get one in the field of play on this one. We haven't. We've seen quite a few of them go out of bounds. We saw several penalties in the first half, and hopefully this second half is a little more disciplined, a little more clean. That kickoff is, uh, should be fielded cleanly, and it is about the 25. Oh, oh wow. boy, and a big time hit down the far sideline at the 30-yard line, and uh, Quentin Miles just introduced himself to a couple of players from Earl. <laughs> he sure did. So the Indians will come out on the third to start the third quarter at their own 30-yard line. And this is a big possession for Mark Tree, Andy, because if Bohannon is out the rest of the game and Mark Tree can put six to eight points on the board here, then it's a whole new ball game. Blake Daniels, the senior, will step under center again in the double wing offense. He'll hand it off to Griffin. Griffin running to the right, bounces off one defender, and he's hit hard by Marquise Brown at the 30-yard line. There we see Brown again. Both sides of the ball, these Brown twins are really great athletes. And it looked like a little jawing going on between uh, the <laughs> twins and D'Angelo Griffin after that play. Sets up second and about eight for Mark Tree. Blake Daniels, the senior quarterback, apparently can do it all. Not just a great football player, but uh, this week got a couple of offers in baseball from Henderson State and Crowder College. And, wow. Oh, tackle around the neck there. Jerome Shackelford takes it across the 30, and uh, he pretty much got clothesline about the 33-yard line to pick up a, maybe a couple brings up third and seven, third and six, uh, excuse me. But you gotta gotta like having an athlete if you're Mark Tree that can do a little bit of everything, not just play football, but uh, can sling a baseball around the diamond as well. Yeah, it's really good news. Uh, it's uh, good to hear for him. And uh, you'd think if he's a baseball athlete, they'd let him throw the ball a little more, but not tonight. Hands it off. It's a double reverse. 
and it did not go much further past the line of scrimmage. D'Angelo Griffin got the initial handoff, and Griffin handed it off to uh, another player immediately after that. Yeah, we've seen that several times tonight. And Earl, I think, seen that not only several times tonight, but also on film because they haven't been tricked yet. Yeah, that will set up fourth down for the Indians. They'll have to punt this one away. D'Angelo Griffin, I think uh, people would like to see the ball get in his hands a little bit more. He's mm -hmm. an all-conference player a year ago. He averaged 10.9 yards per play, which uh, if you got the ball in your hands, that's a first down every time you touch it. This time he steps back, takes a high snap, and he'll kick it away. Great leg. And it'll take a bounce to about the 20-yard line. Marcus Brown's going to scoop it up. He's down the far sideline. He's at the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, to the middle of the field, the 50, the 45, the 40. Down the far sideline, the 30-yard line is where he's going to be knocked out of bounds. And an wow. excellent return from Marcus Brown. But see a flag down on the field. And no, I believe that's where the referee dropped his hat or his beanbag just to make sure where the ball was set. And there you see it. And another explosive return by Marcus Brown. Great return. He sets his team up with great field Just position. What a move right what there. Move, right? Absolutely juked a player out of his shoes. And he still won't go down. A 52-yard punt return from Marcus Brown sets up Earl at the 29-yard line. Run up the middle with Merritt. Merritt. And we'll stretch forward to about the 24-yard line. Yeah, we, do, we will see Dontrell Johnson out there. He just handed the ball off to Merritt, and that is their second string quarterback. He does play a little bit of receiver and running back, but this is what they're going to use him for at the moment. Well, he's kind of a utility guy, uh -huh. and he can do a little bit of – uh, honestly, he can do a little bit of everything. Against Hazen in week one, he threw for a touchdown, caught a touchdown, and ran for a touchdown oh as my. Merritt takes this one very near the 10-yard line. So, uh, But, yes, Dontrell Johnson going for the trifecta that night. Yeah, quite a few athletes here on Earl's team. And uh, like you said, also for Mark Tree, uh, Blake Daniels getting a couple scholarship offers to play some baseball. Um, they just can't translate that in any points tonight for Mark Tree, unfortunately be first and goal for Earl here on this possession. First and goal for the Mark Tree 10 yard line. They fake the handoff. Dontrell Johnson is going to keep it himself. Running to his left. Got two blockers in front of him. He's at the five. Wow, big hit. But he did get way laid out of bounds by Paul Coleman. That's a big 5'10", 165 sophomore. He plays a little bit of receiver too. And watch the Big hit there at the end, and you were talking about that utility aspect there for Dontrell Johnson. And wow, what a hit there at the end, man. Paul Coleman laying the hammer, but a big pickup on the ground for Johnson, and he brings it inside the five-yard line down to about the two. Second and goal again for the Bulldogs. Johnson hands it to Merritt. Merritt fighting forward through four Indians. Did he get it? He did not. He did not. You like to see Mark Tree, even though they're down by 22 and the ball's on the foot line, uh, they're still putting up a stand here. What a goal line stand there from the Indians. And that'll bring up third and goal for Earl from, as you said, Alex, about the inch yard line. And we'll see if they hand it off to Merritt again, but I wouldn't be surprised if they let Dontrell Johnson go up the middle on a draw here. They let Bohannon do it a few times earlier in the night. But no, they'll give it back to Merritt. Merritt sidesteps one player in another and shimmies his way into the end zone for another six points. It is now 28 to nothing with 8.38 remaining in the third quarter. And another stroll in by Merritt on his second touchdown of the night. As you see it here, just a, a little read, and they will give it to Merritt. Stiff arm and strolls right in again for his second score. How many times can you juke <laughs> get into the end zone in one yard? Yeah. He was able to dance his way in, and again, it is now 28 to nothing. And again, Earl will have to go for two here. I guess you can juke as many times as it ends in six, and then it's all right. <laughs> Johnson in the shotgun formation with Merritt standing next to him. He's going to roll to his right. Tosses it out in the corner, and it's caught by Marcus Brown. Excuse me, Marquise Brown, rather. 
and it will be 30 to nothing after that two-point conversion. 8.38 to go in the third quarter, and Earl just continues to pile on the points. They sure do. We're back after a word from our sponsors with more of your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. We are more than daily transactions. We are more than checks and debit cards. We are more than farmland. For the people of Poinsett County, we are more than just a bank. At First Delta Bank, we see the world through the eyes of our customers because we know that our customers are our most valuable investment. We are proud of who we are and want to earn your banking business. We are First Delta Bank, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. 30 to nothing after that one yard touchdown rush. The second of the night for Richard Merritt and the Earl Bulldogs are up big time on the Mark Tree Indians with 8.38 to go here in the third quarter. A little short onside kick here and Paul Coleman's gonna fall on top of it for the Indians. I'm not sure if that was meant to be an onside kick but it was well placed and it would have been a good one if that was intentional. Great play by Paul Coleman though jumping on it and saving Mark Tree a possession here. That's one of those you go back to the sidelines and tell Coach, yeah, I meant to do that, Coach. <laughs> exactly what I was planning to do. Because you're right, if, if he uh, if he intended to do that, it worked out really well. And nice heads up play. Presence of mind there by Paul Coleman to not try to let it roll out of bounds, but go ahead and jump on it. And they'll have good field position here with 8.31 to go. And that's just a sophomore in there for the Indians with the presence of mind to fall on top of that. But as you said, Alex, good field position for the Indians starting out some of their best field position of the night. And again, uh, Earl bringing 11 players in the box. They threw it, and Daniels has got a man down the sideline. And he Jerome steps out at the 45, and it was Jerome Shackelford who hauled that one in. And again, Earl was was bringing the entire house with him there. Absolutely. I, I, wasn't for, I don't think they were ready for the pass. Uh, but like you said, they had their whole defensive line in the backfield. And a, a great play by Daniels just to sling it out there for a big game. He had two or three white jerseys bearing down on him, and he was able to, to throw that one off of his back foot and landed right in the hands of Jerome Shackelford. We'll see if they can repeat that here on first and 10 from the Earl 45-yard line. Nope, they pitch it out to D'Angelo Griffin. He follows his blockers ahead to about the 40-yard line and a nice pickup on the ground for the senior all-conference tailback. Absolutely. A, a couple of good plays here by Mark Tree back-to-back. And uh, that's exactly what they need right now is we have an Earl player down on the ground. Yeah, we certainly hope he is okay and it's not more than a cramp. And it looks like that is Jaquavius Selvey down on the ground, a sophomore lineman for Earl. And we hope he is all right. We've seen him make a big-time tackle tonight. and he's, uh, he's been a big part of that front. 8.01 remaining here in the third quarter. Also in the third quarter, some scores around the area as we see Selby being helped off the field. Hopefully he is okay. Brooklyn, how about this? Up on Highland in the third quarter, 38 to 14. That's wow. not a uh, typo. You didn't hear me wrong. <laughs> Brooklyn up on Highland in the third quarter, 38 to 14. Flyville, excuse me, Batesville rather, also up on Nettleton. 34 to 14 as Selby makes his way to the far sideline and he, it appears he's going to be okay. So he walks it off on his own. Eight minutes and counting remaining here in the third quarter. Second and four for Mark Tree. Daniels in the sideline. Back in the double wing formation. And again, Earl bringing pressure right up the middle and that's where they run it. Spin wow. move and Jalen Gunn Spun off of one defender right into the arms of another one. And right into the arms of Banks. Big hit by Cortez Banks. He's he's had a good game tonight. He's been all over the field. Cortez Banks has uh, put forth a lot of effort tonight for the Earl Bulldogs, and it's certainly shown. There's something about a player, a football player with dreads. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but it's it's so intimidating to see those dreads flying around underneath that helmet. Yeah, me and my roommate, we, we talk about it, and we say it's like that Samson strength. It's, it gives them extra strength to have those big dreads. Third and three for the Indians. They pitch it out to Griffin. Griffin, following his blockers, threw a big gap up the middle, and he's down to very near the 30-yard line. I believe it's more than enough for the first down, Alex. Uh, they're going to move the chains. And they will. Griffin running with some purpose right now, uh, really putting his head down. And like you said, first down, great run by Griffin. 
Archery just trying to put it in the end zone for the first time tonight. And they've already had wins over Harrisburg and Barton this year, but they've lost to Pickett in Cross County. Only scored seven points against Pickett. Was able to put up 21 on the T-Birds, but so far, nothing going for the Indians against the Bulldogs tonight. This time they'll hand it off to Shackelford. Shackelford off the left tackle is across the 30 down to about the 28 yard line with six minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Big Joseph Davis on the tackle there coming across from the left side, able to make the stop there, good tackle. Brings up second and seven for Mark Tree as Shackelford heads back to the sideline for a breather. Paul Coleman back in for him. Looks like Coleman, D'Angelo Griffin out there, as well as Jalen Gunn. Three backs for Blake Daniel. Oh, and I think that play was broken from the start. I don't think. Uh, I don't think that play went the way it was supposed to. <laughs> no, Paul Coleman didn't have much room. As soon as, or even before he touched the ball, D-line was in the backfield, able to make a stop there. It looked like that play was broken from the get-go, so that does bring up third and ten. Ball is spotted at about the original line of scrimmage, now under six minutes left to play in the third. And Mark Tree, uh, they probably, this is as probably as far as they've gotten into Earl territory mm -hmm. tonight, and they've got to make something happen here on third down to stay in this game. And that is definitely not what they needed. They'll call a false start, and they'll back up five yards. And that is definitely not what they needed here. With their one of their best drives of the game, put together some big chunks of yardage, and then it comes to a third and ten, and you end it with a penalty here. It's not a not a good start to this second half. Not a good start at all for Coach Cody Wallace in his first year. And should bring it bring it up to third and 14 for the Indians. I think, goes they'll, from, I think they'll have two plays regardless if they don't get the first down here. I think they'll still go for it. Oh, absolutely. We are, we're definitely in four down territory for the Indians at this point, probably for the rest of the game. So now it goes from a third and manageable, as you said, to try to try to be able to two, two plays now. Back in the wing tee, Daniels under center. He'll take the snap, hands it off. Looking to his right with Griffin. Griffin tackled by four white jerseys past the 30 yard line, but he picked up a good probably seven, eight yards on the ground and it does make it a fourth and manageable. He sure least. did. Uh, Earl thought the ball was going to the right there and that was another one of those uh, deceptive plays and Griffin running with his head down was able to get a nice gain there. And that leaves him with the manageable fourth down and short. Some of these misdirection plays that Mark Tree has have, have ran tonight have worked out for him really yeah. well. It, it's just they haven't been able to uh, get them to work consistently enough for them to be able to put some points on the board. And they're going to try to get that to happen here on this play, fourth and five. Daniels looking to throw, fires over the middle, got a man, and it's complete down to about the 20-yard line. And a catch from Ricky Harmon helps the Indians get down inside of Earl, get down inside of Earl's territory for the first time tonight. Yeah, you see it there. I think that was another completed pass, and that was the second completed pass of the night for Daniels. Boy, he fired that one over the middle, and uh, there's a little bit of that maybe baseball arm strength yeah. that we're uh, being told about. Right about four minutes left to play in the third. And some scores from around the area. Hoxie up on Melbourne right now, 28 to nothing, as Daniels takes this one across the line of scrimmage down to about the 15-yard line. I think he'll stop just short of that. Again, Hoxie and Rivercrest are game of the week next week down in Wilson. Pick up a five on the ground for the Indians on that carry. It'll be second and five, and we're going to have a timeout down on the field. Earl's going to take their first charge timeout of the second half. They are up 30 to nothing with 338 remaining in the third quarter. We're going to go ahead and step aside with the players down on the field, take a quick breath, and we're back with more of your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week after this. 
Kaiser LP Gas Company is a family-owned propane company serving residential, commercial, and agricultural customers in Craighead, Crittenden, Poinsett, and Mississippi counties in Northeast Arkansas. Located on Highway 181 South in Kaiser, Arkansas, Kaiser LP Gas can fill all of your propane needs, whether it's for farm equipment, your home, or business. Kaiser LP Gas has you covered. Call today at 870-526-2198. Andy Manis and Alex Smith back here in Mark Tree. 30 to nothing, the Earl Bulldogs up on the Mark Tree Indians. And 338 remaining here. Hopefully not for long, anyway, Mark Tree thinks. So we've been talking about Blake Daniels airing it out tonight. Haven't got to see it until just now here in the third quarter. So far, he's three for three through the air. 24 yards. Perfect on the night. And off this time off the left side for Shackelford. Shackelford fighting his way forward across the 15 down to about the 14 yard line under 330 left to play here in third. That should bring up third down and Mark Tree continuing to attack the ground and still trying to find some points. Third down and four for Mark Tree from the right hash mark. Daniels back under center. He'll have Shackelford directly behind him. He's going to keep it himself. Runs it across the 10 yard line. He'll lean forward to about the seven. And I believe he got more than enough for the first down. And that looks like it. And he will have enough for the first down. And Mark Tree's inching ever closer to getting their first six on the board tonight. First time they've been inside the red zone all night long. And now they've made it down inside the 10 yard line for the first time tonight with their first, first in goal. Under three minutes left to play in the third. Mark Tree threatening to score here on this drive. Hand it off to Griffin. Griffin, oh no, that's not Griffin, but he's into the end zone. Jalen Gunn for the first Mark Tree touchdown of the night. That was an impressive run. Cortez Banks lowered his shoulder and made the move, but he just bounced off as you'll see here, bam. And he'll stay on his feet and take it up the middle for the touchdown, six points Martin Tree. I think they'll go for two here as they are down six to 30. Well, that was just a, a poor case of arm tackling there. He completely laid the hit stick there with the shoulder, but I uh, forgot to wrap him up. If he had thrown any arms out at all to try to wrap up Gunn, it, it probably would have taken him down. Daniels under center, turns, keeps it himself, bowls over a defender. Did he cross the goal line? He did. He did. Blake Daniels gets in for two. And that caps off a five minute, 54 second drive. 58 yards and Mark Tree's on the board. Eight to 30 with 239 left to play in the third quarter in our Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. Farmers Bank and Trust offers instant image debit cards. Showcase your school spirit, your grandkids, your pet, or your favorite sport. Walk in, open an account, and walk out of the bank with an instant image debit card ready to use. Finally, a debit card as unique as you from Farmers Bank and Trust. Traditional banking at its best. Farmers Bank and Trust, with locations in Blyville, Gosnell, and Manila. Member FDIC. Andy Mass and Alex Smith back here with you, and Mark Tree with the Indians. Just scored for the first time tonight. Capping off a 58-yard drive with eight points. They now trail 30 to eight, 239 left to play in the third quarter. And the Indians excited about getting a little momentum going on that last drive. They sure are. I mean, six, excuse me, eight to 30 now. And uh, you know, that may look like a pretty far score, but Mark Trees played pretty well tonight. Earl's just so athletic. They really took over this game and uh, We'll see an onside kick here, and it did not go the distance, though, Andy. Did not, so Earl's going to get some pretty good field position, and they've had excellent field position for the majority of tonight. This drive will, start of this drive will be no different for the Bulldogs. And again, still have not seen Gary Bohannon back out into the game. Contrail Johnson. Oh, wow. And uh, I think that I think the penalty was actually just called on on Earl. 
So they're going to kick it off again. I don't know. I don't know that I've seen very many uh, kickoffs, kickoff penalties like that be charged to the return team. It is rare. I don't know if I've seen it before. Well, you Andy. see holding and blocking right. in the back, but you don't really see one before the ball is kicked. Uh -huh. I believe they call offsides on the Bulldogs. So again, you don't see that happen very often. So uh, Mark Tree now catching a little bit of a break, and they're going to they're going to kick from <laughs> from their own 45. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they try the onside again the other direction. Or if they'll just go ahead and kick it deep. Ramiro Rodriguez is going to be the kicker, and he is going to kick it straight in a line. And that ball went <laughs> negative yards, Andy. And, uh, yeah, that, that one's not going to work. <laughs> you saw, see one of the Indians looking at the sky in frustration. 239 remaining here in the third quarter and Earl's set to come back out on offense. And I believe they'll start where the ball wound up at. So it's gonna be at the 42 yard line. Catching some scores from around the area. Jonesboro now up on Little Rock Central 48 to 12, Brooklyn uh, still gaining ground on Highland, 45 to 22. And Brooklyn actually trailed early in the game against Highland, 14 to six, but they, they have did. since just gone berserk. <laughs> Absolutely. First and 10 here in Mark Tree for the Bulldogs. They handed off to Merritt. Merritt with some shifty moves. He's across the 40, the 35, the 30 down the far sideline before being pushed out of bounds. But there is a flag down on the field at about the 25 yard line. Merritt was pushed out very near the 20. And we'll see what the flag is going to be called for. It was behind the runner. So you got to think it's going to be maybe a holding or a block in the back. You just saw Marcus Brown walk across your screen with his arms outstretched. So you got to wonder what that's going to be. And another great run by Merritt, you'll see here. And I don't know no, that I ever. Sure where I, saw the I don't know that I, saw I ever saw anything there, but they're going to say it's going to be a hold. Uh, excuse me, a block in the back, not a hold. Uh, so they'll mark it back from the spot of the foul. Actually, it looks like they mark it back from the spot of the ball. All right, well, I guess they already marched the, <laughs> marched the penalty off here. And so Earl now setting up first and it looks like 12 from the 35-yard line. Johnson keeps it himself. He's running to his left, picks up a block. He's at the 35, tried to cut back towards the middle of the field. And now we've got a, uh, another flag down. And, and I tell you, Alex, I think that flag was thrown very, very late for a block in the back. And that's actually what the penalty is going to be. And we have a player down on the ground and it is Dontrell Johnson right now. And he is, I think he hurt a leg or maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. It's like, like he's got just a cramp. Up there. That motion that you saw him doing, that's one of two things. That's either getting the wind knocked out of you <laughs> and feeling like you're about to pass out, or that's a cramp. And that's that. I mean, if you've ever had a leg cramp before, you know that that's something you kind of roll around in pain with. And it's certainly something that'll put you on the ground like that. Yeah, and that's really Earl. Earl can't afford to lose another quarterback, especially Dontrell Johnson. Well, I'll be honest. I'll be honest, Alex. I'm not sure that they have another on their roster. I mean, they may, but see, Marcus Brown has quarterback listed by his name. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Brown. And Dontrell Johnson is going to be uh, helped off the field. He'll limp off, and hopefully, it is just a cramp, and he'll be okay. Clock has been stopped with 2:22. Left to play here in the third quarter. And Johnson's headed back to the huddle like he's ready to play. I think they're telling him, hey, you got to come off the field for at least one one play. I don't know if he'd have done his team that good if he can't really get off the field, Andy. Part of a competitor, though. And he's having a hard time walking off the field. So it uh, looks like Kenneth Payne coming into the game now.
another senior for Earl. And now we'll try first and 10 from the 45 yard line. Again, uh, that play is going to be uh, marked back because of a block in the back as Merritt is going to take this one across the 40. And that should bring up second and about eight. So we've had two consecutive runs and two consecutive penalties, and we're just now at second down here. It seems like we've been at first down for uh, an eternity here. It does, and it seems like we uh, stuck at about two minutes here in the third quarter for eternity. We're going to be stuck at 145 here for a few more minutes. 145 left to play in the third quarter as Earl has taken their second charge timeout of the second half, so we'll take one with them. Your score, 30-8. to eight. Earl leads on our Tubetown Sports Game of the Week. Action Medical Supply in Truman is a family-owned local business dedicated to providing the best medical supplies and service. Let us show you how much a back brace can enhance your life and relieve your pain. Medicaid, Medicare, and most insurance is accepted and Action Medical will even deliver to your door. Stop by or call Action Medical Supply today at 870-483-6959. Andy Manis and Alex Smith back here with you in Mark Tree where the Indians trail 30 to eight with 145 left to play in the third quarter. I've already seen two Earl quarterbacks be taken out of the game uh, with possible injuries. Saw Dontrell Johnson walk off a moment ago with uh, possibly a cramp. We hope that's all it is. And of course, Gary Bohannon left the game a little bit earlier. Right now in the backfield is Richard Merritt. He's gonna hand it off to Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown running off to his right is across the 30 yard line and down to about the 25 and another flag, another flag down on the field. We have had four plays and three flags. That yeah, was just unnecessary by Caden Williams. He, he pushed Marcus Williams there when the play was over and we have personal foul. And an automatic first down. see it here again. Great run by Marcus Brown again. Great game, first down. Wow, and, and there you saw that right there at the end. Just a little unnecessary shove and got to get your emotions in check here if you're a Mark Tree fan. That is the second personal foul we've seen be called on Mark Tree tonight. The last time it happened, I believe, was on a fourth down play and it gave uh, Earl an immediate, obviously an automatic first down. And this time it moves the Bulldogs down at the 15-yard line. Merritt takes the snap, runs it up the gut, and he'll get across the 10-yard line down to about the 8. That brings us to about 130 left to play in the third quarter. We'll get that clock running again as we keep one in bounds and we don't have any flags on the play. I think both coaches probably pretty happy about that on this particular play. <laughs> That's a quite win. a few flags. Merritt takes the snap again. He'll run it up the gut once more. Fighting for extra yardage. Very close to the goal line. I'm not sure if he got in. One official standing at the goal line, the other yet to wave touchdown. And they'll say he got in for a first down. So he didn't uh, score a touchdown, but he did get enough for a first down. Makes it first and goal, but from the one yard line. So we'll see if Richard Merritt is again gonna get the, get the uh, snap and run it up the gut. Takes the snap, runs it up the gut, fighting forward, leaning, and he'll get it. Touchdown signaled by the referee makes it 36 to eight with under a minute left to play in the third quarter. I think that one will just about put it out of reach, Andy. Mark Tree hasn't got anything going on offense here tonight and Earl's just had everything going. And it doesn't look like they'll be able to catch up running that double wing offense. It doesn't. Have not been able to find any open space to run through tonight. And the few times that they found it, it's either been called back because of penalties or they haven't been able to put it in the end zone. Only once tonight has Mark Tree made it in. This time a handoff to Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown fumbled it. So the two-point conversion, no good. Excuse me, that's, I don't know if that was Marquise or Marcus. It was actually Marquise Brown on the fumble. But that will make it 36-8 to eight with 51 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We'll step aside for another word from our sponsors. 
We're back with more of your Two Count Sports Game of the Week after this. Whether it's a night out on the town or a special occasion, visit Bistro 1121 in Blyville. Live music on Tuesday, prime rib special on Friday. Bistro 1121 on East Main in Blyville. Perkins Restaurant and Family Bakery in Blyville. Newly renovated and open 5.30 a.m. until 11 p.m. daily. Stop by for any meal, anytime, or take home delicious sweets from our bakery. Perkins Restaurant and Family Bakery in Blyville. Oh, okay. Andy Manis and Alex Smith back here in Mark Tree. 36 to 8 is your score. Earl leading Mark Tree and Richard Merritt is having himself a heck of a night. 112 yards on 22 carries, three touchdowns Absolutely. for the senior tailback from Earl. And Cortez Banks going to reset the ball. Try to kick this one away. Very, very long third quarter here between these two teams. Cortez Banks setting up to kick here. Kick this one away, very short. Bounces at the 40, hit by one man and knocked out of bounds. Paul Coleman's able to punch it out of bounds and very wisely. Uh, Marcus Brown standing here on the near sideline jawing with some of the Indian players. And uh, his teammate Kenneth Payne having to pull him back a little bit. Fifty seconds remaining here in the third quarter, and Mark Tree will set up on offense from the 41-yard line. Again, we will be at, at Hoxie and Rivercrest for our Tube Town Sports Game of the Week next week. And both of those teams winning tonight in their respective games. Rivercrest up on Piggott right now. Hoxie beating Melbourne 28 to nothing. And Mark Tree, again, sticking to the double wing and unable to get anything going with it. That's a loss of two. Stopped in the backfield. And a flag. And uh, looks like Marcus Brown is still continuing to jaw, and I think he actually just got a penalty called on him. Unsportsmanlike conduct called on Earl, and that'll be an automatic first down for Mark Tree. Both of these two teams getting a little bit chippy, and I don't understand. We've made it through three quarters of play without any sort of incident, and now here all of a sudden in the third quarter, uh, both teams seem to be uh, kind of jawing, going back and forth. A little chippiness has ensued between these two teams, and actually I think it was uh, – Fred Williams, who uh, got the penalty called on him, as you see him jogging off the field right now to go have a chat, probably with Coach Albert Coleman. First down for Mark Tree. Set back up in the double wing offense. Daniels under center, hands it off to Griffin. Griffin. Working to the right, can't find any space to get past Cortez Banks. And again, Andy, another loss of yards on that double wing formation. Uh, Mark Tree just can't get anything going up the field. 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We'll see if they want to get another playoff here before the end of the third or if they'll head to the fourth, trailing 36 to eight. And with five seconds remaining on the clock, that's exactly what they're gonna do. So the end of the third quarter is upon us. 36 to eight is your score. Score Earl leading Mark Tree as we head to the fourth in your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. Thirty-six to eight as we get ready to start the fourth quarter of play here in Mark Tree. The Indians trailing Earl in this two A three conference matchup. Again, join us next week for our Two Town Sports Game of the Week as we head down to Wilson for Rivercrest and Hoxie. Nice three A three matchup there. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun 
catching the Colts and the Mustangs in action next week. Rivercrest leading right now in their game, and Hoxie up 28 to nothing right now on Melbourne. So uh, both teams look like they're going to be coming off wins coming into next week. It looks like we'll have a pretty good game. So. Rivercrest about to go to 3-2, and two, defeating a very good picket team who is undefeated on the year and heading into tonight. Hoxie, meanwhile, heads a 4-1. and one. Hand off to Griffin. Griffin through the line of scrimmage down to about the 45-yard line. And he's able to get back to about the original line of scrimmage. And that'll bring up third and 14, Andy. Excuse me, it looks like it'll be about third and 10 now. Just starting the fourth quarter of play here in Mark Tree, D'Angelo Griffin. All conference tailback for the Indians. Averaged 10.9 yards per play last year and tonight has not been able to find much open field. That's really an impressive yards per carry average. First down every time you touch the ball. But tonight Earl has been stacking as you see as they're doing here on this play. Nine to ten guys in the box every play. Daniels pitches it out to Griffin this time. And uh, man, had everybody fooled again looking for the run as they have been all night tonight, but throwing his first incomplete pass on that play, bring up fourth down. And he's getting some instruction here from Coach Wallace on the sideline. And Coach Wallace in his first year with Mark Tree. Uh, certainly has his work cut out for him here in the 2A3 conference. A very difficult conference to come into. Daniels under center. Hands it off to Griffin. It's a double reverse. This time it's Shackelford and Shackelford out to about the 38-yard line, but not enough for the first down, and it'll be a turnover. And the Earl offense will come back out onto the field. That will be it's about the third or fourth time tonight we've seen turnover on downs from Mark Tree. Of course, uh, I think probably the first two or three of those happened in the first quarter. It did. When both teams were struggling to hold on to the football. Since then, we, I think we've, uh, we've gotten rid of the fumble bug here. Had a couple different bugs tonight. We've had a fumble bug, an injury bug. Now here in the second half, it's been a penalty bug. It sure has. And we've seen quite a few yellow flags here in the third quarter, and hopefully we won't have near as many in the fourth. 10.47 remaining here in the fourth as we've got a player late coming onto the field. Roll back on offense. Direct snap to Banks. Banks at the 50, the 45, the 40. It's a foot race. He's down to the 20, the 10, the 5. Push forward. He'll fall into the end zone for a touchdown. And Cortez Banks just took that one about 55 yards for the touchdown. That was an amazing run by Cortez Banks. He finds the hole right away, and once he gets that head of steam, he is gone. And you'll see here at the end, Blake Daniels, excuse me, not Daniels, D'Angelo Griffin able to catch up, and he throws him about 10 yards before he's able to get in for the touchdown. Man, once Banks hit that second level, there was nobody left in the secondary to catch him, and that will make it 42-8, to eight, and trying to hit another two-point conversion are the Earl Bulldogs. Merritt standing in at quarterback again. Both quarterbacks for the Bulldogs injured tonight. So the tailback. Richard Merritt standing in. Five seconds left on the play clock. High snap. It's still a little bit of chippiness here between these two teams. I don't know if you just saw Marquise Brown run into one of the Mark Tree players, but he wasn't too happy about any of the contact between the two of them. I did, and I don't see any reason for it. When it's 42 to 8, there's already another flag on the play, so you're going to go ahead and talk some more. Uh, I don't really understand it, and that'll be a false start, and it'll set them back a little bit more for this two-point conversion. Emotions, emotions are riding a little bit high at the end of this game here in Mark Tree, and as you said, not really any reason for it. The score being 42 to 8, potentially about to be 44 to 8 if they can convert this two points. And yeah. snaps goes to goes to Marcus Brown, and Marcus Brown was met before the goal line, and they say he got in. They will give it to him, and I believe that will. 
I believe that will start the non-stop clock running as that will put them up by 36 points. And I'll be honest, I don't know if he got across, Alex, looking at that replay. It's hard to tell from this angle, but definitely something to talk about when we come back. 44-8 to eight is your score with 10-22 left to play in your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. Forty-four to eight here in Mark Tree, where Earl up big time in the fourth quarter. Ten twenty remaining in the game, and Earl getting set to kick this one away. Mark Tree with two men back deep to return. I don't think it'll even get there because we haven't had a uh, had a long kickoff tonight, but I could be wrong. D'Angelo Griffin jumps, takes it at the 20. Moving to the near side of the field, he's at the 25. He's got a seat, the 30, the 35, moved out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And the Indians will come back out on offense, and the clock will continue to move at this point as we have reached turbo clock stage here in Mark Tree. So the clock will not stop from here on out. Pretty good return by Griffin here, one of the highlights of the night for Mark Tree as we haven't had many. Uh, good little return. We could have used a lot more of that earlier on the night. Again, he's your all-conference player that averages nearly a, or averages over a first down per touch and uh, have not seen him find a whole lot of open space tonight. The few times he's found it, he's made use of it, and you've seen that acceleration that he has just haven't been able to see it quite consistently enough as the pitch goes out to Shackelford Shackelford across the 40 down near the 45 yard line stops short at about the 44 and we are at the nine minute mark and counting probably see about two plays per minute from here on out so both teams just going to try to finish out this game and look forward to next week Again, looking forward to next week, Earl is going to face Walnut Ridge and then travel to take on Salem. Meanwhile, Mark Tree will face Midland and travel to face Walnut Ridge. Second and five, handoff to Watt. And I beg your pardon, that was Shackelford again on the carry. He's up to about the 50-yard line, and it was enough to move the chain, so it'll be a first and 10. For Mark Tree. Under 8.15 left to play now here in the fourth quarter. And if you're Coach Cody Wallace, I think you just want to try to keep the ball for as long as you can here at the end of the game. And honestly, you just want to try to find the end zone again. Now you really do. You want to have something to look forward to going into next week, something to build upon. And this is something that you can do here with eight minutes to go and ticking in this game. Daniels hands it off. Stiff arm from Shackelford. Shackelford lowers his shoulder and he's down to about the 46 yard line. So that'll bring up second and six after a four yard pickup on the ground. And the Indians, well, excuse me, the Bulldogs actually with another player down at the ground and he could be uh, just another cramp there as well. Hopefully he's okay. I can't quite get a number on the player. And actually that's Marquise Brown. That's something you don't want to see for Earl, one of their playmakers down on the ground with an unwinnable game. Excuse me, a game that's already won. Usually you don't want to see that. And you certainly hope it's just a cramp and nothing more than that because, as you mentioned, this game, Alex, is, is out of reach, and you hate to lose a senior playmaker like that whenever, uh, whenever the game is a little bit out of hand. We are going to step aside while... They take a look at Marquise Brown. 7.39 left to play in the fourth. We're back after this on your Tube Town Sports Game of the Week. We are more than daily transactions. We are more than checks and debit cards. We are more than farmland. 
For the people of Poinsett County, we are more than just a bank. At First Delta Bank, we see the world through the eyes of our customers because we know that our customers are our most valuable investment. We are proud of who we are and want to earn your banking business. We are First Delta Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. 739 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 44 to 8 is your score. Earl ahead of Mark Tree right now. And Marquise Brown just uh, carried off the field by coaching staff. He's uh, unable to put any weight on his legs. And so you, you hope it's just a cramp and nothing more serious than that. First and 10 for Mark wow. Tree. And a big time tackle there at the Number line of scrimmage by Earl. Yeah, that was big. Number 56, Cordell Chase. That should bring up third and 10. Seven minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. How about this score for you, though? Brooklyn up on Highland, 51 to 28. That's something you're not expecting to hear. No, not at all. Not at all in the 4A3 conference. The Brooklyn Bearcats, I don't think they've won a game so far this year, but uh, could be about to win one right here. Daniels trying to find some place to go. He's shuffles back to the original line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard off of it and a little bit of uh, a little bit of pushing and shoving going on there at the end of that play. That brings up fourth down for Mark Tree with 6.30 left to play here in the fourth quarter. 44 to eight is your score. Turbo clock is in effect as Daniels walks back out onto the field to hopefully get a first down for the Indians on this fourth down play. I think the Indians would just absolutely shock everybody if they stepped out in a shotgun formation right here. <laughs> they go back to the double wing. Daniels, that's the defense. Hands it off to Griffin again, a double end around, and the man is still on his feet. He's at the 35, the 30, that's Paul Coleman now to about the 20 yard line. And is that a flag at the 20, I see? It is, Andy. What a run there by Paul Coleman. Everybody was looking at D'Angelo Griffin, and again, Griffin hands it back off to Coleman, and Coleman takes off here around the left side. Really a great run by Coleman there, and that was another one of those deceptive plays. And it started to work, and Coleman gets a nice nice gain and adds a little stats to his repertoire before this game is over. And apparently that's not a flag down at the 20-yard line. It certainly looks like one from up here. But it does. It'll be first and 10 for the Indians from the 25. The handoff goes up the middle with Gunn. And Jalen Gunn gets maybe three yards on the pickup. That brings us under five minutes left to play here in the fourth. And it'll be second and six. Actually, excuse me, second and seven for the Indians here inside Earl Territory. So again, Mark Tree threatening here at the end of the game. Already found the end zone once tonight, trying to get a little bit of momentum as they look to, look to face Midland next week. Daniels. Takes the snap, hands it off to Gunn. Gunn up the middle, still on his feet. He's down across the 15. And ooh, forward progress was stopped at the 15. And he got slammed down right after that. He'll have to come off the field for a play as he lost his helmet. That'll be enough to move the chains though for the first down. Under four minutes left to play here. And Earl has reached their uh, average points per game on the year. Again, averaging 39 points per game. They scored 44 so far tonight. Meanwhile, Mark Tree with a run up the middle across the five down very near the goal line was a run from Jerome Shackelford. He's down near... I think they'll spot him at the four. But enough to again move the chains for the Indians. Mark Tree putting together a good run here at the end of the game. And you just wondered if, if you could do this at the end of the game, why haven't you been able to move it like that the whole game? And now Earl may be slacking a little bit now. but Well, again, something that, that we've talked about through the course of the game is, is 
Earl is, or excuse me, Mark Tree rather, is they hand this one off up the middle and it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, Mark Tree is, is heading towards a rebuilding phase. They have a lot of seniors on this team, but these seniors are in their first year of this new offense. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, with a first year head coach. And so, uh, and same deal with these juniors. You're going to have all these juniors that will be at, at least have a year of experience underneath uh, Coach Cody Wallace next year. Uh, meanwhile, you'll have all these sophomores and, and freshmen that are that are going to be coming up to the team next year. And it's already a very small roster. Only 18 players on the roster as Coleman cuts it up the middle, and he got in for a touchdown. Coleman's able to stretch across the plane and put six more points up on the board for the Indians. And as you look there, it looks like we have another player down on the ground. That's a player for Earl grabbing the back of his leg and he got up with no problem and will look like he'll stay in the game uh, now he's actually being told he has to come out of the game which is the rule fourteen to forty four Trying for two here and diving for the end zone was Daniel. Did he get in? And no good. No good. And actually that was Chris Chavez on the attempt and he wasn't able to get in. A minute and 30 seconds remaining here in tonight's ball game. We're just gonna keep it right here. As again, turbo clock has ensued and we're under a minute 30 for tonight's ball game. 14 to 44 is your score. And you know, Andy, I think Earl came into this game and did what we thought they would do. Uh, they had a great game passing. That is before Gary Bohannon went out. That's interesting to see how that will play out for their future games. But before then, he had a great game. And he, even when their backup Johnson came in, they had a good game going. So Earl's really a team that's going to have to be reckoned with here in this 2A3. And uh, 50 seconds to go here in this game. Mark Tree, we'll see what they do with it. Just enough time, I think, to get a kickoff away and uh, potentially get a, a return in. But honestly, if, the, if you're the coaches, do you let that happen? Because you and I both know the, the kickoff return and punt return, two of the uh, more dangerous situations for players in football. And you're absolutely right. You have uh, some of the biggest people that we have running at each other full speed. And you know, uh, it looks like it's just going to run out here. We only have about 18 seconds left, and I wouldn't see any point in putting your kids in jeopardy here, but you can go ahead and go through the motions. And I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Five seconds left on the clock, and uh, this one's over, folks. Your final score tonight between the Earl Bulldogs and the Mark Tree Indians, 44-14. to 14. Again, Earl comes away with a victory tonight in Mark Tree. And they will head on to a record of four and one. Face Walnut Ridge next week. Mark Tree falls to two and three. And they will face Midland their next time out on the field. We are going to step aside for a quick break. When we come back, we'll have some post-game stats for you right here on your two-town sports game of the week. <laughs> 